Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. How are you tonight, Doc? I am fantastic, Queenie. How are you? Couldn't be better. We are super duper excited that all of you are able to join us this evening. And we are wondering, wondering, wondering what the St. Patrick's Day looked like wherever you are. Well, here in the greater Kansas City metro, it's starting to cloud up because we're supposed to get rain tonight and rain tomorrow. And our temperatures are supposed to drop. Hmm. Okay. So we are hopeful that it, it looks like it will be a temporary fix, but we do need the, we do need the moisture. Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And actually, um, for St. Patrick's Day Parade, for a lot of people that have been missing it for two or three years now, it's nice that that was able to happen. So that's pretty cool right off the bat. Um, it was beautiful weather. Oh, my gosh, yes. If, if you didn't get a chance to get out today, uh, you did miss a great day because it was gorgeous. All awesome. right. Um, you had mentioned that you wanted to do Jude 1. Is that right? Yes, we can start That'd there. It's just one thing. chapter. Mm -hmm. That would but. be terrific. And so um, let's get to the Bible trivia section. That might help too, huh? Perhaps. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. What do you uh, know about Jude, Doc? You know, I don't know much about Jude. Okay. Um. I just picked a, a book that we never really read. I mean, it's a short one. Yes, it is. But, chapter uh, one, and there ain't no chapter two. So you are correct. Yes. And Fantastic. then we get to the point after that if we want to go left or right. Because if we go to the right, we get into Revelation. <laughs> and we've actually done Revelation. Yes, we have. Yes. So that will answer that particular question for us. So we will now be going to Jude, and we have one chapter in that, and we will get started. Are you ready, Doc? I am ready, Queenie. Go for it. Okay. Are you ready for this one? Who I'm wrote, afraid. But okay. I know. <laughs> Who wrote this book? Peter, Paul, Jude, or John? Who wrote this book? Peter, Paul, Jude, or John? Jude chapter one, verse one. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. Jude it is. Sounds like Jude. He said, it is needful that I write to you to exhort you to give thanks to the Father care for widows and orphans, earnestly contend for the faith, or demonstrate Christian charity. He said, it is needful that I write to you to exhort you to give thanks to the Father, care for widows and orphans, earnestly contend for the faith, demonstrate the Christian charity. That would be Jude chapter 1, verse 2. No, I'm sorry. Verse three. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Are you getting feedback, Queenie? Because I'm getting local feedback here. Uh -uh. I, no, I'm not actually. Okay. I don't know what it is. I keep getting that. That is one of those cyber things. A lot of people got shut down yesterday. So that's why I was wondering, but no, I'm actually not getting feedback over here. Okay. Then it just must be me. <laughs> he brings to remembrance the people that God brought from this land, Jerusalem, Babylon, Palestine, Egypt. He brings to remembrance the people that God brought from this land. Jerusalem, Babylon, Palestine, or Egypt? I'm guessing, because here goes my version, that that's uh, verse 5. Let's give that a shot. Sounds good. 
Jude 1, verse 5, though you already know this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but I later destroyed those who did not believe. Guess who we have with us tonight, Doc? I think maybe Donna, perhaps. Donna and Calvin, yes. <laughs> you are correct, and we are thrilled that you're with us tonight, watching live and not on, on the replay, too. We are in Jude, obviously, chapter 1. They left their own habitation, and God has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment. Some saints, some prophets, some priests, some angels. They left their own habitation, and God has received them in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment. Some saints, some prophets, some priests, some angels. Jude 1 verse 6. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. Angels it is. These cities and the cities about them turn themselves over to fornication. Bethany and Bethphage, Jerusalem and Capernaum, Sodom and Gomorrah, Canaan and Hur. These cities and the cities about them turn themselves over to fornication. Bethany and Bethphage, Jerusalem and Capernaum, Sodom and Gomorrah, Canaan and Hur. Jude 1 verse 7. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. What archangel contended with the devil, disrupting about the body of Moses? Enoch, Michael, Cain, or Balaam? What archangel contended with the devil, disputing about the body of Moses? Enoch, Michael, Canaan, or Balaam? Jude, chapter one, verse nine. I can't hear you at all. Like zero. Uh-uh, not at all. Uh, you're actually, your thing is on mute right now. Like your microphone. There you go. Let me, let me try one more time with the headphones and see if it works. Zero. And now you're on mute. Unmute your actual screen. There you go. I was trying to get rid of the feedback. Oh, well. I guess it's not meant to be. Uh, Jude 1, verse 9. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Who prophesied, saying the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints? Ezekiel, Jonah, Moses, or Enoch? Who prophesied, saying the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints? Ezekiel, Jonah, Moses, or Enoch? Jude chapter 1, verse 14. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones. In, in the last time, there shall be revival, a great awakening, earthquakes, or mockers. In the last time, there shall be revival, a great awakening, earthquakes, or mockers. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> uh, Pushing the wrong button. I'm going to need the verse. Ah, there it is. 17. Uh, actually, Jude this is 16. 18. 18. 18. Well, it was close. Uh, they said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. Build yourselves 
on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, with your, with your witness of our Lord throughout the world, with building blocks of worth or in God. Build yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, with your witness of our Lord throughout the world, with building blocks of worth or in God. Jude 1 verse 20. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Build yourself. Oh, we did that. Thank you. Keep yourselves in Jerusalem, beyond the Pharisees, in the love of God, or quiet. Keep yourselves in Jerusalem, beyond the Pharisees, in the love of God, or quiet. Jude 1, verse 21. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Boom. Would you like to hear how the message feels about this one? I can't wait. <laughs> All right. I, Jude, am a slave to Jesus Christ and brother to James, writing to those who loved by God the Father, called and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Relax. Everything's going to be all right. Rest. Everything's coming together. Open your hearts. Love is on the way. Dear friends, I've dropped everything to write you about this life of salvation that we have in common. I have to write insisting, begging that you fight with everything you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and cherish. What has happened is that some people have infiltrated our ranks. Our scriptures warned us that this would happen. Who beneath their pious skin are shameless scoundrels. Their design is to replace the sheer grace of our God with sheer license, which means doing away with Jesus Christ, our one and only master. I'm laying this out as clearly as I can, even though you once knew all this well enough and shouldn't need reminding. Here it is in brief. The master saved a people out of the land of Egypt. Later, he destroyed those who defected. And you know the story of the angels who didn't stick to their post, abandoning it for other darker missions. But they are now chained and jailed in a black hole until the great judgment day. Sodom and Gomorrah, which went to sexual rack and ruin, along with the surrounding cities that acted just like them are another example. Burning and burning and never burning up, they serve still as a stock warning. This is exactly the same program of these latest infiltrators, dirty sex, rule and rulers thrown out, glory dragged in the mud. The Archangel Michael who went to the mat with the devil as they fought over the body of Moses wouldn't have dared level him with a blasphemous curse, but said simply, no, you don't. God will take care of you. But these people sneer at anything they can't understand, and by doing whatever they feel like doing, living by animal instinct only, they participate in their own destruction. I'm fed up with them. They've gone down Cain's road. They've been sucked into Balaam's error by greed. They're canceled out in, Kor in Korah's rebellion. These people are warts on your love feasts as you worship and eat together. They're giving you a black eye, carousing shamelessly, grabbing anything that isn't nailed down. They're puffs of smoke pushed by gusts of wind, late autumn trees stripped clean of leaf and fruit, doubly dead pulled up by the roots, wild ocean waves leaving nothing on the beach but the foam of their shame, lost stars in outer space on their way to the black hole. Enoch, the seventh after Adam, prophesied of them, look, the master comes with thousands of holy angels to bring judgment against them all, convicting each person of every defiling act of shameless sacrilege, of every dirty word that had spewed of their pious filth. These are the grumpers and the bellyachers grabbing for the biggest piece of the pie, talking big, saying anything they think will get them ahead. But remember, dear friends, that the apostle of our master, Jesus Christ, told us this would happen. In the last days, there will be people who don't take these things seriously anymore. They'll treat them like a joke and make a religion of their own whims and loves. These are the ones who split churches, thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them, no sign of the spirit. 
But you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, staying right at the center of God's love, keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. This is the unending life, the real life. So go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. The sin itself stinks to high heaven. And now to him who can keep on your feet, standing tall in his bright presence, fresh and celebrating to our one God, our Savior, our only Savior through Jesus Christ, our master be glory, majesty, strength, and rule before all time and now and to the end of all time. Yes. That was different. Very seriously. I'm always intrigued by how um, the Lord puts different chapters, verses, books on your heart. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, I always know that there's a reason that you choose what you do. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone tonight to Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. We have Donna and Calvin with us and the one and only Debbie Miller. Pretty mm -hmm. fabulous for everyone here tonight. Doc, are we going to First uh, John now? I think we're going to go to First John, Queenie. Yes. First John, it is. Okay. So why did John say he wrote this epistle? That your joy may be full to prove Jesus was the Messiah, he was instructed to, or he hoped to gain recognition. Why did John say he wrote this epistle? That your joy may be full to prove Jesus was the Messiah, he was instructed to, or he hoped to gain recognition. Bless you. Oh, I thought you were gonna sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can first bless John, okay. Yeah, bless you. Uh, one four. We write this to make our joy complete. That your joy may be full. It is. Bam. What was the message John had heard about? God is perceivable. God will judge. God is hope. God is light. What was the message John had heard about? God is perceivable. God will judge, God is hope, or God is light. First John 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. There is none of this in God. Grace, <laughs> hope, yeah, mercy, darkness. There is none of this in God. Grace, hope, mercy, darkness. First John 1, verse 5 again. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we are deceiving those around us stumble, lie, shall prosper. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we are deceiving those around us, stumble, lie, shall prosper. First John 1, 6. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with strangers, one another, sinners, sojourners. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with strangers, one another, sinners, sojourners. First John 1 John 1.7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us all from, from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, evil thoughts, deception, 
the wickedness of the heart. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, evil thoughts, deception, the wickedness of the heart. 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light, uh, yeah, um, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the, ble the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us of, from all sin. Did I answer that right? I've already yes, forgotten. You, 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 <laughs> you did great. Tonight, we would also like to welcome Sandy Abate. Miss Iowa herself is here with us tonight. Yay. Sandy, welcome. We're thrilled that you can join us for Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. If we say we have no sin, we deceive God, others, ourselves, or the devil. If we say we have no sin, we deceive God, others, ourselves, or the devil. 1 John 1, verse 8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he condemns us, forgives us, punishes us, or reproves us. If we confess our sins, he condemns us, forgives us, punishes us, or reproves us. First John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and, pure us, and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make a fool of ourselves, him a liar, his words vain, or ourselves honorable. If we say we have not sinned, we make a fool out of ourselves, him a liar, his words vain, or ourselves honorable. First John 1.10, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word not in us. Ouch. Yeah. If we say we have not sinned, this is not in us. Love, faith, charity, his word. If we say we have not sinned, this is not in us. Love, faith, charity, his word. First John 1 verse 10 again. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Would you like to tell us the message version of this chapter, Doc? I would love to, Queenie. <laughs> All right. It does make it easier, actually, for me to understand when you read it in the message. It really does. It's spoken in current verbiage vernacular, and it does help me. All right. First John chapter 1. Uh, from the very first day we were there, taking it all in, we heard it with our own ears saw it with our own eyes, verified it with our own hands. The word of life appeared right before our eyes. We saw it happen. And now we're telling you in the most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredibly this, the infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We saw it, we heard it, and now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. Our motive for writing is simply this, we want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. This, in essence, is the message we heard from Christ and are passing on to you. God is light, pure light. There's not a trace of darkness in him. If we claim that we experience a shared life with him and continue to stumble around in the dark, we're obviously lying through our teeth and we're not living what we claim. But if we walk in the light, God himself being the light, we also experienced a shared life with one another. As the sacrificed blood of Jesus, God's son, purges all our sin. If we claim that we're free of sin, we're only fooling ourselves. A claim like this is errant nonsense. On the other hand, if we admit our sins, make a clean breast of them, he won't let us down. He'll be true to himself. He'll forgive our sins and purge us of all wrongdoing. 
If we claim that we've never sinned, we out and out contradict God, make a liar out of him. A claim like that only shows off our ignorance of God. Woo! Seriously, I don't think he's playing on this one. What do you think, Doc? No, no, I don't think he plays much. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia, whether it is live as Donna, Calvin, Sandy, and Debbie are with us or on the replay. And we're thrilled that you're here. We are now in 1 John chapter 2. Ready, Doc? I am ready, Queenie. I write these things that ye know I am a prophet, know all wisdom, sin not, or be encouraged. I write these things that ye know I am a prophet, know all wisdom, sin not, or be encouraged. 1 John 2, verse 1. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. I was just waiting to see how big our delay is. He is our advocate with the Father. Peter, John, Jesus Christ, or Paul. He is our advocate with the Father. Peter, John, Jesus Christ, or Paul. 1 John 2, verse 1 again. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Jesus is the propiti <clears throat> Jesus propitiation. Is the propitiation for the righteous, the sins of the whole world, the Jews, or his prophets. Jesus is the propitiation for the righteous, the sins of the whole world, the Jews, or his prophets. 1 John 2, verse 2. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we know him if we keep the faith, trying, praying his commandments. We know that we know him if we keep the faith, trying, praying, or his commandments. First John 2, verse 3. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. The love of God is perfected in those who fast and pray, give tithes and offerings, keep his word, are apt to teach. The Lord, the love of God is perfected in those who fast and pray, give tithes and offerings, keep his word, are apt to teach. First John 2, and I just lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking and I just lost my place. I'm thinking it's verse 4. Meaning it's actually 5, but yeah. That's five. Okay. First John two, verse five. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Your sins are forgiven for a season for his namesake, but not forgotten at diverse times. Your sins are forgiven for a season for his namesake, but not forgotten at diverse times. 1 John 2, verse 12. I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. If any man loves this, the love of the Father is not in him. The Christ, the world, the law, or his family. If any man loves this, the love of the Father is not in him. The Christ, the world, the law, or his family. First John 2, verse 15. 
Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. He that doeth the will of God shall be rewarded, stand, be known, abide forever. He that doeth the will of God shall be rewarded, stand, be known, abide forever. First John 2, uh, verse 17. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. John said, I have written to you because you requested it, lack wisdom, know the truth, are wicked and perverse. John said, I have written to you because you requested it, lack wisdom, know the truth, are wicked and perverse. First John 2 verse 21. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Not the truth. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was just going to say truth is a pretty big word in this particular chapter. Yeah. This is the promise he has promised us. Eternal life, serenity, tribulation, or hope. This is the promise he has promised us eternal life, serenity, tribulation, or hope? First uh, John 2, verse 25. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. It's a pretty good promise. That takes yeah. us to the end of chapter 2. Awesome. This will be interesting to see what the, the message says, Queenie. Absolutely. All right. All right. First John chapter two. I write this, dear children, to guide you out of sin. But if anyone does sin, we have a priest friend in the presence of the Father, Jesus Christ, righteous Jesus. When he served as a sacrifice for our sins, he solved the sin problem for good, not only ours, but the whole world's. The only way to know we're in him. Here's how we can be sure that we know God is in the right way. And keep, I don't know, let me try that again. Here's how we, we can be sure that we know God in the right way. Keep his commands. Uh, I, I wish, I'm, I'm hoping nobody's hearing the feedback. The no, louder. I don't. I don't. Uh -uh. Okay. I don't know if anybody of our participants can hear it, but it's just bouncing back. Every time I say something, it just comes back really wow. well. Um, sorry. So anyways, if someone claims I know him well, but doesn't keep his commandments, he's obviously a liar. His life doesn't match his words, but the one who keeps God's word is the person in whom we see God's mature love. This is the only way to be sure we're in God. Anyone who claims to be intimate with God ought to live the same kind of life Jesus lived. My dear friends, I'm not writing anything new here. This is the oldest commandment in the book. And you know what you've known it from day one. It's always been implicit in the message you've heard. On the other hand, perhaps it is new, freshly minted as it is in both Christ and you. The darkness on its way out and the true light already blazing. Anyone who claims to live in God's light and hates a brother or sister is still in the dark. It's the person who loves brother and sister who dwells in God's light and doesn't block the light from others. But whoever hates is still in the dark, stumbles around in the dark, doesn't know which end is up, blinded by the darkness, loving the world. I remind you, my dear children, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. You veterans were in on the ground floor and know the one who started all of this. You newcomers have won a big victory over the evil one. And a second reminder, dear children, you know the Father from personal experience. You veterans know the one who started it all. And you newcomers, such vitality and strength. God's word is so steady in you. And your fellowship with God enables you to gain a victory over the evil one. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out love for the Father. Practically everything that goes on in the world wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important, 
has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from him. The world and all its wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. Antichrist everywhere you look. Children, time is just about up. You heard that the Antichrist is coming. Well, they're all over the place. Antichrist everywhere you look. That's how we know that we're close to the end. They left us, but they were never really with us. If they had been, they would have stuck it out with us, loyal to the end. In leaving, they showed their true colors and showed they never did belong. But you belong, the Holy One anointed you, and you all know it. I haven't been writing this to tell you something you don't know, but to confirm the truth you do know and to remind you that the truth doesn't breed lies. So who is lying here? It's the person who denies that, that Jesus is the divine Christ. That's who. This is what makes an antichrist, denying the father, denying the son. No one who denies the son has any part with the father, but affirming the son is an embrace of the father as well. Stay with what you heard from the beginning, the original message. Let it sink into your life. If what you heard from the beginning lives deeply in you, you will live deeply in both Son and Father. This is exactly what Christ promised, eternal life, real life. I've written to warn you about those who are trying to deceive you, but you're no match for what is embedded deeply within you, Christ's anointing no less. You don't need any of their so-called teaching, and Christ's anointing teaches you the truth and everything you need to know about yourself and him uncontaminated by a single lie. Live deep, deeply in what you were taught. Live deeply in Christ. And now, children, stay with Christ. Live deeply in Christ. Then we'll be ready for him when he appears, ready to receive him with open arms, with no, no cause for red-faced guilt or lame excuses when he arrives. Once you're convinced that he is right and righteous, you'll recognize that all who practice righteousness are God's true children. So I've got a comment, Queenie. Ready, set, go, Doc. I find it interesting, you know, how old is this scripture? Several thousand, thousands of years old. And they're talking about the Antichrist being there. You know, I used to think that the Antichrist was one person's going to show up. You know, yeah, I, gonna, I think most people did, yeah. But, you know, people are Antichrist if you don't believe that's an antichrist. If you go against God, like he's saying here, that's an antichrist. I don't think it's just one person. That's correct. Yeah. And then, and then you just read this, this, you know, of course, as we all know, the Bible can apply to today uh, each and every day. And you just look at this and yeah, there's, there's people that have turned their back on God. There's people that are part of the world and have turned their back on God. There's people that are chasing money and material things and that's worldly and that's not of God, you know, so it's not much has changed, huh? Well, and that's why I think they say the word is today, tomorrow, forever. It's, it's mm -hmm. never, it, it always pertains. It's just incredible written yes. as long ago as it was. And it's still, you open a Bible on any single page, just literally crack your Bible open like this. Whatever is right there is what he wants you to know. And it is today. Yep. And so it, it really, it, it's just, it's, it's incredible. It's therapeutic. Um, it's comforting. It's everything. And I really, uh, if I, I'm always a bit sad for people who don't know that yet. Yeah. Yeah. They're searching and it could be right in front of them. Absolutely. I, I need a word that is pertinent. Boom. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and it makes sense in some respects how, you know, Christians aren't perfect and people are like we always talk about on Doc and Queenie or other platforms. People are always watching. And if they don't oh, yeah. see something that's uh, good coming out of a Christian, of course, that's going to make them stop and think, you know, I mean, we're, we're walking testimonies. We're supposed to be the light. We're still human. But yeah, I mean, people are watching. That is totally for sure. We so appreciate each of you being with us tonight. We have Donna and Calvin, Sandy in Iowa, and Debbie in Missouri, uh, Kansas City area. And we are now headed for 1 John chapter 3. What manner of love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called this? Blessed, the sons of God, living souls, sheeps of his pasture. 
what manner of love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called this. Blessed, the sons of God, living souls, sheep of his pasture. 1 John 3, verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The world, the reason, the world. <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> Let me try that again. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. When he shall appear, we shall fall on our faces, flee, be like him, or destroy the works of the devil. When he shall appear, we shall fall on our faces, flee, be like him, de destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, verse 2. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will not, what will be, has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is the transgression of the law. Hope, faith, charity, sin. This is the transgression of the law. Hope, faith, charity, sin. First John 3, verse 4. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. He that does righteousness, deceives himself, is righteous, shall not stand in the judgment, is pitied. He that does righteousness, deceives himself, is righteous, shall not stand in the judgment, is pitied. 1 John 3, verse 7. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He that commits sin is to be pitied of God of the devil, human. He that commits sin is to be pitied of God, of the devil, human. First John 3, verse 8. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. He Bam. sinned from the beginning, Jesus, Adam, mankind, the devil. He sinned from the beginning, Jesus, Adam, mankind, or the devil. First John 3, verse 8 again. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. I think that's the message they're trying to hit home. Perhaps. Yeah, this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. Love one another. Combat sin. Sins cannot be purged. Wisdom is deceitful. This is the message that you have heard from the beginning. Love one another. Combat sin. Sins cannot be purged. Wisdom is deceitful. First John 3, verse 11. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Whoever hates his brother should confess to the priest, is a murderer, shall stand alone, knows not what he does. Whoever hates his brother should confess to the priest, is a murderer, shall stand alone, knows not what he does. First John 3, verse 15. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Do not love in words that only God understands, that cannot be uttered, of wisdom and sound doctrine, rather in deed and truth. 
do not love in words that only God understands, that cannot be uttered of wisdom and sound doctrine, rather in deed and truth. 1 John 3, verse 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. We will receive what we ask of him because we keep his commandments and ordinances, ceremonies, tithe, do those things pleasing in his light. We will receive what we ask of him because we keep his commandments and ordinances, ceremonies, tithe, do those things pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3, verse 22. And receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do do what pleases him. That takes us to the end of chapter three, Doc. Wow, we blew through that quickly, Queenie. Yes, we did, ma'am. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Positively. There you go. <laughs> All right. First John 3 in the message. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously, because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how well, how we'll end up. What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him, and in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming, stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. All who indulge in a sinful life are dangerously lawless, for sin is a major disruption of God's order. Surely you know that Christ showed up in order to get rid of sin. There is no sin in him, and sin is not a part of his program. No one who lives deeply in Christ makes a practice of sin. None of those who do practice sin have taken a good look at Christ. They've got them all backward. So my dear children, don't let anyone divert you from the truth. It's the person who acts right who is right, just as we see it lived out in our righteous Messiah. Those who make a practice of sin are straight from the devil, the pioneer in the practice of sin. The Son of God entered the scene to abolish the devil's ways. People conceived and brought into life by God don't make a practice of sin. How could they? God's seed is deep within them, making them who they are. It's not in the nature of the God begotten to practice and parade sin. Here's how you tell the difference between God's children and the devil's children. The one who won't practice righteous ways isn't from God, nor is the one who won't love brother or sister. A simple test. For this is the original message we heard. We should love each other. We must not be like Cain, who joined the evil one and then killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because he was deep in the practice of evil, while the acts of his brother were righteous. So don't be surprised, friends, when the world hates you. This has been going on a long time. The way we know we've been transferred from death to life is that we love our brothers and sisters. Anyone who doesn't love is as good as dead. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know very well that eternal life and murder don't go together. This is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacri sacrificed his life. Ah. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow believers and not just be out for ourselves. If you see some brother or sister in need and have the means to do something about it, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing, what happens to God's love? It disappears, and you made it disappear when we practice real love. My dear children, let's not talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down debilitating self-criticism, even when there's something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. And friends, once that's taken care of and we're no longer accusing or condemning of ourselves, we're bold and free before God. We're able to stretch our hands out and receive what we ask for because we're doing what he said, doing what pleases him. Again, this is God's command to believe in his personally named son, Jesus Christ. 
he told us to love each other in line with the original command. As we keep his commands, we live deeply and surely in him, and he lives in us. And this is how we experience his deep and abiding presence in us, by the spirit he gave us. Pretty, so pretty cool. heavy duty scripture tonight, my friend. Totally. All righty then. How are we doing on time? Good. Okay. We are thrilled that you're with us tonight. And we love the fact that you're watching live or on the replay. We have Donna, Calvin, Sandy, and Debbie. And we're now headed to 1 John chapter 4. Ready, set, go, Doc. I'm ready, Queenie. <laughs> Try these whether they are of God. The saints, ceremonies, angels, or meats. Try these whether they are of God. The spirits, ceremonies, angels, or meats. 1 John 4, verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Every spirit that confesses this is of God. Love conquers all. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Hope above all things. Every spirit that confesses this is of God. Love conquers all. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, hope above all things. 1 John 4, verse 2. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Greater is he that is in you than a thousand mighty men, an army of angels, fire, or he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than a thousand mighty men, an army of angels, fire, or he that is in the world. 1 John 4, verse 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. God is waiting upon us, whispering to his people, love without judgment. God is waiting upon us, whispering to his people, love or without judgment. First John 4 verse 6, we are from God and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. He that dwells in love dwells alone, dwells among men, dwells in God, dwells as a strong house on a hill. He that dwells in love dwells alone, dwells among men, dwells in God, dwells as a strong house on a hill. First John 4. This is always fun because my version is so different from your verbiage. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm there. First uh -huh. John 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Yes, I see what you mean. Mine was dwells in God, yeah. There is none of this in love. Faith, hope, this is profound. There is none of this in love. Faith, hope, wisdom, fear. There is none of this in love. Faith, hope, wisdom, fear. Um, okay. 18. <laughs> Oh, see, I didn't get far enough. <laughs> it just jumped from like five to 18. And I'm still like around 10 and 11 going, I don't see anything close to that. First John 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. How's that for powerful? I think it is powerful. I love that one. Yeah. This casts out fear. Fasting, prayer, perfect love, 
the apostles. This casts out fear, fasting, prayer, perfect love, or the apostles. I know the app. Uh, I, I can't find it. <laughs> uh, it's 18 again. It is 18 again. See, there you go again. Uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love dry oh, drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. It's all about the verbiage. We, <laughs> we love God because he is our only hope. We have no choice. He first loved us. We want rewards. We love God because he is our only hope. We have no choice. He first loved us. We want rewards. First John 4, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. If any man says he loves God and hates his brother, he is confused. He is a liar. His brother shall despise him, shall not be blessed. If any man says he loves God and hates his brother, he is confused. He is a liar. His brother shall despise him, shall not be blessed. First John 4, verse 20. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. We have this commandment that whoso loves God love his brother also, does well, sins, or is wise. We have this commandment that whoso loves God, love his brother also, does well, sins, or is wise. First John 4, verse 21, and he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. That takes us to the end of chapter four, Doc. All right. You ready? I am ready. So first John four in the message version. Don't believe everything you hear is the title. <laughs> My dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who talks about God comes from God. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. Not true. Here's how you test for the genuine spirit of God. Everyone who confesses openly, openly his faith in Jesus Christ, the son of God, who came as an actual flesh and blood person, comes from God and belongs to God. And everyone who refuses to confess faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist that you heard was coming. Well, here it is sooner than we thought. My dear children, you come from God and belong to God. You have already won a big victory over those false teachers, for the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. These people belong to the Christ-denying world. And they talk the world's language, and the world eats it up. But we come from God and belong to God. Anyone who knows God understands us and listens. The person who has nothing to do with God will, of course, not listen to us. This is another test for telling the spirit of truth from the spirit of deception. God is love. My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. No one has seen God ever. But if we love one another, God dwells deeply within us and his love becomes complete in us. Perfect love. This is how we know we're living steadily and deeply in him and he in us. He's given us a life from his life, from his very own spirit. Also, we've seen for ourselves and continue to state openly that the father sent his son as a savior of the world. 
Everyone who confesses that Jesus is God's son participates continuously in an intimate relationship with God. We know it so well, we've embraced it heart and soul, this love that comes from God. To love, to be loved. God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us so that we're free of worry on judgment day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ. There's no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment, is one not yet fully formed in love. We, though, are going to love, love, and be loved. First we were loved, now we love. He loved us first. If anyone boasts, I love God, and goes right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it, he is a liar. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the God he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. You've got to love both. Amen. Wowza. I wonder why these hours always go so fast, Doc. You know, cause. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was perfect. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, seriously. We do thank everyone who joined us tonight. We're thrilled to see you, Sandy and Donna and Calvin and Debbie. And we love that you're able to join us live. It's very fun to have interaction as far as the answers on the screen. And that keeps us going every single week on Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia. Doc, take us home, my friend. The hour is up. Thank you, Queenie, and thank you again for everybody participating and everyone that's going to check out the replay. This is Doc and Queenie Bible Trivia on Thursday nights at 7, or you can check us out on Facebook Live every Monday at Hi, <laughs> And Queenie does that well. Have a blessed and fantastic rest of your evening, tomorrow and the weekend, and hopefully we'll get to see you either Monday or next Thursday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Queenie. Thank you, Doc. Good night, everybody. Good night.